Saw franchise to me is the horror equivalent to a soap opera. And not in a bad way, but the main attraction to any Saw film is the traps. And as the franchise progressed, they did not disappoint. For the most part, like any soap opera, the storyline is super convoluted, but that's kind of the reason why I really enjoy this franchise. Now, to be clear, I don't love these films, but I do enjoy them for pure popcorn fun and tons of carnage candy. In this video, I'll be reviewing all eight Saw films. So sit back, relax, subscribe to the channel, and let the games begin. Saw was released on October 29th, 2004 in the US, and I saw this film opening night with my good buddy. It was one of those movies that had a lot of hype around it. It looked terrifying, and it looked different than what was out at the time. And I can say with all certainty that both my friend and I, after we walked out of that film, we didn't know what hit us. My buddy and I kept talking about all the different twists and turns, how that one dude cut off his foot, and how Jigsaw just closed the door like a pimp saying game over. Needless to say, I really enjoyed this film, especially on my first viewing. Rewatching it in preparation for this review, I do have some issues with the film, but I still really enjoy it. Before we dive into the pros and cons, let's go ahead and do a quick synopsis. Adam, who's a photographer, awakens in a bathtub. His ankle is chained to a pipe. And he's with oncologist Lawrence Gordon, who's chained across the bathroom. There's a corpse between them holding a revolver and a microcassette recorder. Both men find a tape in their pockets, and Adam retrieves the recorder. Adam's tape urges him to escape, while Lauren's tape tells him to kill Adam by 6 o'clock, or his wife and daughter will be killed, and he will be left to die. Adam finds a bag containing two hacksaws inside the toilet. Adam breaks his saw while trying to saw off his chain, and Lawrence comes to the horrifying realization that the saw isn't meant to cut through their chains, but rather their feet. Right from the get-go, we're pulled into this story. We have no idea what's going on and we know just as much as our two main characters. The mystery behind why they're both there is revealed to us as it's revealed to them through flashbacks. For his directorial debut, James Wan does a great job. I feel like the script by Lee Wanell is well done. I don't think it's great, but it's one of the better scripts in the franchise. Now, in the later entries, I'm not a big fan of that kind of sickly green that they use as a color palette. The blue tones, I like a lot more, but that sickly green, I feel like doesn't really work well on screen, especially if you're watching it on an HD TV. But I also feel like that comes down to personal preference. I like the pacing of this film, but one aspect that I feel like is lacking is the storyline for Tap and Sing. It just kind of felt thrown in, and I understand they're trying to do the whole police procedural aspect. It's like seven, it only came a few years after that film was released, so it's really paying homage to seven. I feel like the cinematography is decent. It's nothing that really blows me away, and overall, the franchise has a very workmanlike way that it's shot. This also probably has one of the more stronger casts. Carrie Elways is a little hit or a miss, especially with his accent, and there are a few scenes that come across a little more laughable than they should. Lee Winnell actually does a pretty good job. Danny Glover is good, but he doesn't have a lot of screen time. But I think we can all agree that the two standout performers in this film is Shawnee Smith, who plays Amanda Young, and Tobin Bell, who plays John Kramer, AKA Jigsaw. Shawnee Smith is able to exude the strength, but also this fragility of her character. And although Tobin Bell isn't on screen a ton of the time, besides him laying in the middle of the room, he has a very demanding presence and his voice is incredible. Speaking of his voice, that has become so synonymous with the Saw franchise. And what's also become synonymous with the Saw franchise is 
the theme song. As soon as you hear that theme song go on, you know it's Saw. And as soon as you hear that theme song come on near the end of the film, you know this is when all of the puzzle pieces connect together and you see the full story. Of course, no Saw film is complete without traps, and although this film is a lot tamer than later entries, the traps are still pretty well done. My favorite trap in this film is the reverse bear trap with Shawnee Smith. Her just being frantic, trying to figure out a way to get this thing off her head, then having to stab into this random dude's stomach, find the key in his guts, unhook it all within a minute before it completely obliterates her head. I like the way the camera will go around her and everything sped up and it feels so disorienting. It works really well in this film. There's a few other instances where this happens and I feel like it's not overdone like it is in the rest of the franchise. For me, Saw gets an add to the collection. I always really enjoy this film and it's cool to revisit this movie and then continue with the rest of the film to see how they all connect together. Saw 2 was released on October 28th, 2005, and this would become a running theme where a Saw film was released every year right before Halloween. This time, Lee Whannell and James Wan were unable to work on the film, so Darren Lynn Bozeman took up the helm. And the script was actually based off of his original screenplay called The Desperate. It was reworked a bit with help from Lee Whannell and was made into Saw 2. The film features Jigsaw being apprehended by the police, but he's trapped the officers in one of his own games while showing another game of eight people, including the officer's son, played by Donnie Wahlberg. And we see this going on on TV monitors at another location. It also explores some of John Kramer's backstory, and it provides a bit more of an explanation behind why he became Jigsaw. Right off the bat, the film feels a lot larger in scale, not only from a production design standpoint, but also from casting. We have a much larger cast. We have more complex traps, and the storyline is a lot more complex. There's a lot more moving parts in this storyline, and the stakes are a lot higher because there are so many players in this game. As much as I enjoy the first Saw film, I really enjoy Saw 2 a bit more, and that's because of the bigger stakes, the bigger traps, and we're finding out more of the lore of who Jigsaw is. Just like with the first Saw, I feel like the cast is really solid in this film. Shawnee Smith is fantastic as ever. Tobin Bell is great. Donnie Wahlberg is really good. I really like what he brings to this role. There's a lot of this pent up anger and aggression and he just unleashes. I also felt like Frankie G was a good second villain in this film. He is so intimidating, not only because of his size, but because of the fact that he will do anything to survive. He's only looking out for himself and he will do whatever it takes. When it comes to the kills, gore, and effects, it's Definitely a big upgrade from the first Saw film, and we see that right off the bat with our first trap, which is the Venus fly trap. I love this trap, and this entire sequence is great. From the point when he pulls that string off, and it's that ticking time clock, he's got to cut his own eye open, he decides not to because he just can't do it, and then it just clamps around his head. What a fantastic way to start your film. I also really like that we have these eight people inside of this house who are slowly dying from this poisonous gas, and they only have a certain amount of time to be able to find the antidote. And the reveal at the end that Amanda is actually working with Jigsaw was such a great twist, and it leads so perfectly into Saw 3. So for me, Saw 2 gets an add to the collection. I always really enjoy revisiting this film. I really like that everything is bigger, it's bolder, and it's a lot more gorier, and the traps are so much more intricate. Saw 3 was released on October 27th, 2006, and was again directed by Darren Lynn Bozeman. With Saw 3, I feel like this was a major turning point in the series. The traps are more intricate, there's more blood and gore, but I feel like the 
biggest thing that sets this film apart from the previous two films is that this film feels a lot meaner. There's also this sense of hopelessness. Along with that, our main protagonist, Jeff, played by Greg Hoffman, isn't a very likable guy. And as much as you may feel sorry for him having lost his son, he's still so consumed with vengeance. And that vengeance is ultimately what's his downfall and what gets everyone else killed around him. The story follows Jeff, whose son is killed by a drunk driver, and he's put through a series of tests by Jigsaw. And this is in order to try to get him to let go of his vengeance for the man that killed his son. Meanwhile, a bedridden John Kramer has his apprentice, Amanda Young, kidnapped Dr. Lynn Denlin, who is tasked with keeping John alive for one final test before he dies. We're also introduced to John Hoffman, who will be revealed to be one of Jigsaw's apprentices in the fourth installment. I like Saw 3 even more than Saw 2, but if there's one thing that I have to call out that I don't really like about this film is the fact that they killed off Carrie. She was a cool side character in the first two films, and it seemed like she was gonna be one of the main characters, at least from the police procedural aspect. And then when they killed her off, and it happens to be one of the inescapable tests from Amanda, it was a major bummer to see her go. Other than that, I feel like this is a really strong entry in the franchise. I really like all the traps and how nasty and bloody and gory they get. I also really like all the tests that Jeff has to go through. And I also really like the fact that we find out that Jeff and Lynn are connected because they're actually married. And there's not only their lives on the line, but their daughter's life as well. We also get to see how weirdly obsessive Amanda is about Jigsaw, as well as seeing her traps, which are completely inescapable. What's great about Saw 3 is that you could literally watch 1, 2, and 3 and stop there and treat this as a trilogy. Saw 3 also has some of my favorite traps from the franchise. My favorite trap in Saw 3 is easily the rack. It's so cruel, but it's also sold so well by all of the actors. It's also one of the more suspenseful traps because Jeff is just biding his time because he wants to see the man who accidentally killed his son suffer. With all that said, Saw 3 gets an add to the collection. I feel like this film is one of the strongest in the series, even more so than 2. There's a lot of really good kills and gore, great traps, really good performances, and there's so many scenes that are so cringe-inducing. Saw 4 was released on October 26, 2007, and was yet again directed by Darren Lynn Bozeman. The film continues the story of the Jigsaw Killer's obsession with teaching people the value of their lives and occurs roughly at the same time as a previous installment. Despite Jigsaw's death, the film focuses on its ability to manipulate people into continuing his work. The story follows Officer Daniel Rigg being put through a series of tests in order to try to let go of his obsession with saving everyone, while at the same time attempting to save his partner. Saw 4 is my my second least favorite in the franchise. I really don't enjoy watching this film. It just feels really contrived. The character of Riggs isn't very interesting, and that's one of the reasons why I liked Detective Carrie a lot more. She had a lot more character to her, whereas Riggs just feels very one note, and all he is is obsessed with saving everyone. And I get it. It's a part of Jigsaw's whole thing. He wants to be able to teach him a lesson. The opening autopsy scene, it doesn't really impress me. Yeah, it's gory and gross, but it doesn't really do anything. It's just there for shock factor. I was into the police procedural aspect in the first three films because we had a much stronger cast. In part four, the cast is really, really weak. We've gotten rid of so many of the actors that could really hold their own. The FBI agents are boring. We do get some closure around Detective Matthews, but he's killed by the end of the movie, which is a bummer because he was a really good character. By the end of 4, we find out that Hoffman had been working with John Kramer this entire time, which is really interesting. My two major issues are with the character of Riggs and with the traps. As I said earlier, Riggs isn't a very interesting character, and he wasn't very interesting in the last two films. So with this film, he's again very one note, and he just feels like 
any random character that they pulled out of a hat. The major issue I have with the traps is that the lighting sucks. There are so many instances where it's so poorly lit that you can hardly even see what's happening. What I liked about the previous films when it comes to the characters that were put into the traps, they weren't necessarily bad people. Some of them were, but some of them just made really bad decisions. With the people that are put into the traps in this film, for the most part, they're terrible, terrible people. And so you don't really feel bad for what's happening to them. And I feel like that's what this film is lacking, is that kind of moral ambiguity to it. Does this person really deserve to go through all this? Well, when you're putting a guy who's a rapist and a murderer in there, yeah, he deserves to get completely torn apart limb from limb. On top of all that, how was Jigsaw or Hoffman able to set up some of these traps? One of them is set up inside of Riggs' own home. Another is set up inside of this seedy motel. It made sense in the previous films because it was mostly in some kind of an abandoned warehouse. Whereas in this film, it just doesn't add up and makes no sense. If I had to pick a favorite trap, it would be the one that Matthews is in. I just like the fact that his head just explodes and it's one of the few traps where we actually get to see anything because it's not so poorly lit. I've got to give Saw 4 a skip it. I never really enjoy watching this film. I really only watch it because it helps to continue the storyline. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm going to have part two out in the next few days. Be sure to leave a like and don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to support the channel even more, check out my Patreon page. I've left a link down in the description below. Thanks again for coming by and I'll see you guys next time.